Hello, welcome to the second part of the tutorial series on inertial focusing of particles using COMSOL. In this part, we are going to create the geometry in CATIA V5. We are going to use the uh, information given to us in the paper and exactly follow the instructions in the simulation part. As you can see, uh, it's given to us that uh, in the geometry we have an innermost circle of 0.4 42 centimeters in radius or 4.2 millimeters so as you can see in the image that's given to us here the innermost radius is 4.2 millimeters and the next one as you can see is almost uh, twice as big so it's 9 in radius and the last one here is almost 12 so we are going to start by this second semicircle with 9 in radius and create a spiral uh, with 1 and a quarter of length uh, with the outermost radius of 12 and then at the end we'll add in the innermost 4.2 millimeter radius circle so let's jump into Katia and create a new part and once we are in the generative shape design uh, module we can start creating the spiral for the spiral, we need a line, a plane, and a point. So I'm just going to click on the XY plane and go to the sketch mode and draw a line. I'll exit out of the sketch and go to the spiral, click on the spiral tool and give it the supporting plane, the XY plane. The center point would be the origin and the line would be the line that we just made. Once I do, I'll give it the innermost uh, radius of 9 because we're going to add in the 4.5 radius at the end and the outermost will be 12 millimeters in radius and the revolutions would be 1.25 because we had a circle and a quarter of a circle and then I'll hit OK and as you can see the spirals created now we can add in the, the innermost radius of 4.5 so I'm going to go to sketch in XY plane and <clears throat> project the spiral once the spiral is projected I can isolate the projection and then delete or hide the original spiral because it's easier to work in 2D than in 3D alright now we know this radius this distance from the center to this point is 9 so the middle point would be 4.5 so I'll create a point in the middle and constrain it so it's exactly 4.5 millimeters from the origin now I can add in the innermost circle with a radius of 4.5 once we're done we can delete the constraint and the point because we're no, we no longer need them alright before sweeping along the spiral one final part which is the outlet of the uh, spiral this part here uh, is remaining so I'm going to create a sketch and add in that remaining uh, area and then we're free to sweep the cross section along the spiral so I will select the sketch that I made and here I can add in a line starting from here and going up until here it doesn't exactly have to be uh, two millimeters or something it should just be until reaching this point almost here and then we are free to use the sweep tool to sweep in the cross-sectional area of the spiral so in order to be able to sweep I need a sketch for the sketch I need a plane so I'll click the plane and I click the spiral and click in the starting point of the spiral so I'll have the sketch right here I hit OK and then select the plane and enter the sketch mode what I should be doing now is creating the cross-sectional area so I'll just zoom in a little bit then project the spiral so I have the center point exactly here then from the paper I know that the cross-sectional area is 500 micrometers and 155 micrometers this is the width of the spiral cross-sectional area and 155 is the height so I'll start creating a rectangle here in the sketch 
once the rectangle is created, I zoom in a little bit to start constraining the width and the height. So I'll constrain here. First, the width of the cross-sectional area is constrained to be exactly 500 micrometers. And don't forget, we're working with millimeters in Kitsia. So 0.25 millimeters is exactly 250 mil micrometers, and they are combined, create the width of 500 micrometers. And start constraining the width, the height, as it should be 155. So we'll do as we should. And once we are done constraining, we no longer need the line, so we simply delete the line here as well. I'll uh, exit out of this sketch and we can easily sweep this cross-section along the path using the sweep tool. So once my sketch is selected I can select the sweep tool and then select the spiral. And as you can see after hitting OK my spiral is perfectly sweeped along the path. Now all the two parts is remaining the inlets and the bifurcated outlet here. The bifurcated inlet and the bifurcated outlet should be added in a separate sketch. So I'll select the XY plane and enter the sketch mode. Once I'm in the sketch mode, I can now create the inlets of the spiral. Now, we should take into consideration that, as we can see in the paper here, the inlet the inner inlet actually has got a pretty much bigger uh, cross-sectional area than the outer. As you can see here in the image that's given to us here, the inner inlet, which is the sheath inlet, is almost uh, three times bigger than the outer inlet. So we are going to adjust the cross-sectional areas accordingly. Not exactly the same as that, but accordingly almost so that fits the information given in the paper. So I'll first Project this line here, then create the abstract shape of the inlet of the inner and outlet. As you can see here, then we can start constraining this abstract shape. The first constraint that we need is to create a point in the middle here. Not exactly in the middle, we have to constrain it so that it fits the information. Now, as you can see, I can constrain this point and then coincide this point here with the point that I created here. So the inner inlet, this sheath inlet, is bigger than the outer one. So this is the inner inlet. So this point here should be constrained so that it's almost 150 micrometers. And this one is the remaining of the 500, which is 350, which is quite satisfying for the information that we have in the paper. So the next thing is to constrain this point so that it coincide this point here by right click on it and select coincide. These two should be parallel lines so we uh, constrain them accordingly. These two as well should be parallel. This line here should be perpendicular to this line. These two as well. I want both of them to be two millimeters in length, so I'll just type in that. And this one as well should be two millimeters. Now it is almost the way we want them to be, except for this point that is no longer coincide with the point that we created here, but it's not a big deal because we are going to fill in this area here and actually it's better so that it shouldn't be coincided here. So I'll delete this one here. And once I delete that, we are easily going to create the filling later. As you can see, this line here is 136, and this one is 340, exactly the way we want them to be. I'll just delete this projected line because we no longer need that, and exit out of this sketch. The exact same procedure is with the outlets here. So I'll click a click on the SY plane and enter a sketch mode. 
zoom in a little bit then do the exact same things for the outlet I'll project this line create the abstract shape start constraining these two parallel lines before adding the parallel constraint we need this point here so I'll add in the point and constraint it this time maybe a little less than 150 maybe 140 All right now start constraining these two should be parallel these two should be parallel as well I'm sorry these two should be parallel these two perpendicular these two perpendicular as well and now we'll give the length of two to both the inlet the inner and the outer outlets Once they're done, we can easily delete this constraint and point before moving along. And the, the reason behind this is we can easier we can fill in this little part here easier. Perfect. Now I'll exit out of the sketch and create the inners and the outers. We're going to need two tools for that. The first tool is the extrude tool, and the second one is the fill tool. I'll start with the inlets. I'll select the sketch and extrude. As you can see, I can have this at mirror extent and type in the value for half of the height, which is 0 0.078. Now, once it's extruded, I can see that I got these um, empty areas. I can fill them in later. I'll do the exact same thing for the outlet. Click the sketch, hit extrude, and as you can see, it's got the same information as the previous one. I just hit OK, and they are both extruded. For the purpose of filling in, we need a sketch here with the line. So I'll create a sketch, I'll put it on this plane here, and project this line, and then isolate it. And then do the exact same thing for the little line here down at the bottom. And then I isolated it so I can work with it easier. Once we're done, we can start filling in. So I click on this fill tool and select the perimeter of wherever I want to feel. Which is the perimeter of this empty area. As you can see it's filled in. The next part would be the lower part. I'll do the exact same thing for the lower part. And once I see the close counter a message here, I'm sure that I can hit OK and the area will be filled. The exact same thing will happen for the inner, the exact same procedure after extrusion, which is filling. And once the geometry is filled in exactly as we want, we can save that in order to be able to use it in console. But one important thing is that if you don't use Windows, if you're using Mac, and run console on a Mac, you have to save the file as a IGS format. So, going to file save as, instead of saving it as a cat part, you're going to have to scroll down to IGS here so that we will be able to open it up in console and do the simulation. So, bear that in mind. I'll save that as a spiral in desktop, and the next video will start doing the actual simulation in console.